Alright, hi everyone. Welcome back to uh, Redstoning Days on Fishcraft. Excuse me, I'm going to cough already. <coughs> it's a good start. Um, yeah, I'm just heading back to the Nexus. Oh yeah, this is how old some of these areas are. Anybody remember the old door bug when that came in? That was one of the bug, the, uh, the switch around for the door code. And it caused this to happen everywhere. That's how old this map is. And older still. Uh, to be fair, this is one of the... Uh, this is the the original spawn point and let's not show that structure too much because I'm pretty sure Jifish isn't proud of it so we'll just ignore that do, 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 do. but the reason we're heading to our nexus area is because Jifish and I were war, were war good god were working on a um, upgrade to the temporal artifact that he has in here. Essentially it's uh, a command block that makes it night because this is where we go, oh blimey I'm starving, this is where we go for our dungeons and what we have in the Nexus is a bunch of gates to everybody's areas so we've got uh, Jifishes and Geef's main castle area, uh, I think that's mine there, Tommy Tong there, um, the Geef's to there, there's Pale Gothic Angels one, Trobs, I mean there's everybody's got theirs. There's our spawn gate, but over here we have our gate into the dungeon world, which is MC Dungeon, which is great. Uh, it's a phenomenal place, there's been a couple of vids up for them, so yeah, so there we go. But this thing um, just turns it to night, essentially, that's all we ever did here. Let's click, Chillum is activated temple, so, yeah. and that's so that we could just sleep in the Dungeoneer's snooze area. However, Oh, right, so what we have now um, is, me and Fish worked for ages, we were going to go for a circular design in here and it just turned out to be a nightmare in the end, so in the end, let's have a look, okay, awesome, that's really cool, I would have thought you'd put it at the end of the string though, so the thing that we've done anyhow is to run those lights up and then ping, the temporal artifact is activated. Um, now I know there's a way down here, but I don't know if there's a way up. We did this. This was one of those cool times when Jifish gave me OP and admin powers. So we built this using that. And oh, we have some lovely music. Um, so yeah, this is the circuitry under here. It's dead simple, really. Uh, we didn't do much with it in the end. The signal comes down from uh, what used to be a button, but Fish has replaced it with a uh, with a touch plate, which is awesome. Um, so that is the Chulum has activated the temporal artifact text and then the signal comes off of that into this two-way block here which then sends a signal down oh I see what he's done very nice oh he's tweaked a few things he's inverted the signal here ah cool um, so yeah and then it's, it's a duplicate on both sides anyhow so the signal comes down into this crazy um, double comparator countdown circuit do, 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 do. Ah, it's cool um, and then all that happens is when this becomes activated or when the signal's killed the 15 long strength or the 13 long strength from here gradually ticks down until it's finished and then all we've done is connected them all with torches apparently did I do that? I can't remember which way around I did this now um, and a bunch of repeaters so we used three at this end now there could be a repeater slash redstone thing going on here but for consistency we kept them just as repeaters and it was it was free shh it's fine um so yeah it, it turned out to be three repeaters worth for the maximum stretch just because i was bringing each slot in um each line of lights in as it went further and further up they could have just all been in a straight line and had the same repeaters in each one but down here what we've then done is we've increased the tick of one of these repeaters by the number needed so it's three at that end we add three to these guys, two to these guys because we've got one there, and then do nothing to these. And they in turn push power into the block, which is powering a redstone torch, which is then powering the one above it, which then controls the lamps, which are above these blocks here. So that's it. It took us, oh, many hours to try and actually work out what we were doing here. We went through various designs, and in the end I just, I just went, ah, oh, so we'll do it this way, and came in and quickly knocked up the straight line one. Uh, and then the fish has come in and tweaked the activation method, which I like. I think it's awesome. So that's cool. Um, can I can I get out of here now? Soul sand, leather rack, that'll be fine. So I'm going to run it one more time. I just wanted to show you this, uh, you guys, because, um, yeah, it was a bit of a project between me and the fish, and it does do some cool things. So pew, pew, pew. Ta-da. 
that's awesome. Uh, and I'm pretty sure it probably does make it night if it was day. So that's cool. And then everything off. Yeah. That's great. Right, so I'm going to return back home, which is a long old journey through the nether, exactly the way I just came. <laughs> I don't think there is a faster route around, so I'm going to go via Tommy's and <sighs> all the rest. Cool. Uh, I'll see you back at base, because um, today is a couple of upgrades. I've learned a few new tricks um, with um, <laughs> the smallest T flip flop I've ever seen, which is brilliant. So we're going to be upgrading the front door. Um, then I'm going to be upgrading the potato dispenser. Oh yes, um, and then we're going to finish off working on the potion room, as far as getting another wart farm and a uh, mushroom farm going near there. So there's a couple of the ingredients exist near the actual brewing station. So I will get back to you guys. Hello. Um, when when I get back, this is a good long journey through the Nether. Holy crap! Holy crap! You are not allowed to blow up in Tommy's base. Are you kidding me? What the hell are you doing here? I thought this was, I thought this was secure. Right, I'm back in a minute. All oh, right, guys. Oh, really? All oh, right, guys. I screwed up. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh. All right, guys. I screwed up. Um. Ah, uh, what happened? What happened? There was no audio. There was no audio in my recording um, from earlier when I started working on this. So, uh, and all sorts of stuff happened. The the horses escaped because I was working on the door mechanics, and by default they're open. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, hence now there's a stone block in there, and I had to take Binky and rescue Artax there. So that was exciting. But uh, it was all sans volume, so you'll never see it. But... Um, what I am working on, or what I did get working and then took down because it was pointless, was this room in here. If you remember, um, we had the um, crazy pulse shortener with a piston T flip flop jobby to um, to control whether or not the doors are opened or closed. Now that was awesome, and I loved it when I first built it. But um, there's a much much cooler method that you can do with a dropper. Now if you've watched. Uh, the Break the Beast episode, I think, from either the last one or the one before. Uh, I used this for a door mechanism there, which is damn cool, uh, using two buttons. So I'll do it here as well to show you guys. Uh, and essentially, what we have is the two input buttons here, or the two input streams. So that's from the outside button, that's from the inside one, and this is our output to the doors and the pistons and stuff. So what we want to do is we need a dropper. Whoop and a dropper, and a dropper in a nice big circle so they all feed into each other. Now this is not my design by a long stretch, obviously. Um, I found this on the internet somewhere, I can't remember who it was, um, but I think I found it off of Reddit, so uh, it may be up there somewhere. But yeah, thanks to whoever come up with this design, I think it's awesome. I kind of get how it works, so it's not too bad. Um, so, what we have is the input going into the top hopper, uh, top dropper, sorry. We have a comparator on the side, and what that's going to do is we're going to have one piece of stone in there, which means it's sending out a teeny weeny little weak signal at the moment. I mean, it is, it's dinky. Um, now, how did I have this set up? That needs to be. See, we've got um, a repeater there to boost the signal to the far door, one here with an offset so that the timing matches up on both the left and the right side of the doors. Um, that's because I added that earlier on uh, because the signal is no longer strong enough to get to it. Um, now, what was the last section? We need to get the power off of there, so I think um, we'll add that and then a repeater here to draw the power from this block, which has been powered by this a piece of redstone here. And that has all of that connected in. That's turned all of that on. That's awesome. This looks good. So what we have is that there's one last little trick, and that's to lay two pieces of redstone across the top. And let's change that to a repeater. Just for now. I think that's okay. So if we go hit the button, it opens and it stays open. It closes and it stays closed. Now, the last time I did this, I had some weird issue where it was, I think the redstone was interfering. That's looking so cool though, but check that out. So there we go, no pistons, nothing in here, and what's going on 
um, is this cold piece of cobblestone when a pulse is sent through um, it activates now this is where I'm a little bit confused and I'd love it if someone could give me the final rundown as far as I can figure it sends power into here and here because of this redstone across the top so that forces the item down into here now this one gets powered somehow and the item ends up being stuck here apologies if you heard that um, and so when the signal goes round what we end up with, if I go press the button just so I don't have to mess with redstone torches is the comparator's off now because this one is empty but the item is sitting here waiting, so now it's in our off state and when we flick the button again the item just pops up into the top one and there it goes, and that's how it works that is the new <coughs> teeny tiny T flip flop which I think I'm going to be using um, for everything from now on, so that's upgrade number one which is awesome and now um, what I need to do is I'll fix all of this up later on and I will get rid of that nasty stone now there we go so back on and we'll close the door because those horses ain't going anywhere damn you now the reason they escaped as well is because of that weird leash bug where they look like they're leashed now and I think they are at the moment but uh, when you log off for long enough they end up becoming unleashed and pottering about so we're going to keep them up for there now. That's my cryo chamber area. Got a couple of zombies in there, not fussed about them because the next upgrade uh, is super cool. It's using another one of those T flip flops, and here's a, a working copy of what I want to do. I was playing around with this earlier on, and um, it's for the potato dispenser. The potato? Potato. Potato dispenser. Potato. Okay. Um, and what the idea now is, I was talking to Jifish about this and I had a few ideas and I was like, oh, I want it to you know, dispense 5, 10 or 15 or something like that. Um, pew, pew, awesome. Hey, hey, I'm hungry as well. Um, so an array of buttons and then it would dispense a certain number by that, but it's turned out a bit, bit long-winded. So Jifish suggested a lever where you pull it and it just pumps out um, potatoes until, excuse me, until... Um, you switch the lever back and I was like that's kind of cool actually oh, it was a variant on that anyhow piss off beeping um, so excuse me <laughs> this road honestly my, my town these days it just pisses me off during the summer um, what was I saying so yeah what I want to do is I'm going to have a T flip flop set up like this as before so this is exactly the same thing as what's going on downstairs uh, upstairs sorry up there um, with a repeater on the end to boost the signal by 15 so it travels up to these guys and it's this bit at the end over here that's super cool because that's going to do what I want it to do so what my idea is is the user will come along or will come along will hit the button and then this will go into a little circuit and it will just keep pulsing the dispenser pew pew uh, and pumping out potatoes for each signal until you hit the button again and it will stop look at that that's freaking cool I'm so chuffed about this. This I, again I found somewhere on the internet and I'm sure it's a, a well known design but I was looking for a way of triggering a loop but being able to turn it on and off and uh, this does seem to make the most sense which is pretty sweet and I think I understand how it works. It's to do with this delay on these two here so when the signal comes along uh, it's held here and then what happens is the, um, the redstone signal hits this block which then transfers it through to here and then triggers off and starts the loop going but in order to stop it a tick later this one pops forward um, so that the connection is broken here and the loop is maintained by uh, the fact that it goes around here and into the block which is now at this position and loops back around again so if I turn it on it moves into place and there we go it just goes round and round and round in fact I'm curious if I actually if I stop that, no, it's, it's it's going in quite a happy little loop all on its own. So this is now having no effect on um, that side at all. It's all contained within this little area, which is quite sweet. So that's how I'm going to do the potato dispenser. And we'll stop that. That's so cool. And that's all going to go take place over here somewhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut away all my nice new stone that I put there last time. Dang it. And build the um, T flip flop and the timer unit uh, 
uh, there's always a re pulse repeater looper type thing back here somewhere I think and I'll get going on that and then I'll be right back to you guys cool so I think this will do for the room they're all still connected up a little bit jiggery pokery there pointless stoning actually but hey um, now what I'm gonna do is get me old droppers ready straight away and I'm gonna set up the uh, dropper loop so we have you there you there you there and you in there which is cool so this is I mean this really is just the simplest thing I don't think I have another oh dang it I don't have a comparator curses this really is the simplest thing um, if I could just understand exactly how that last little bit of the dropper mechanics works um, but I understand that it, I understand that it actually works it works it works that's cool uh, so the repeater, not the repeater, the um, comparator is going to go here. We need this to connect. So I'm thinking what we're probably going to end up with is uh, going off in that direction a bit more. Because I need to set up that double piston thing. Right, we're going to need to dig a bit more away. Um, now just to get the looper going we're going to need a signal off of here now I wonder if I can do if I can do the double straight off of here so that's the piston like so with a block on it that's cool and that will also connect like that I think that's good I think that's actually going to work so then that pushes open yeah we need a little bit more room um, let's just chip a little bit more away. I think two will be plenty. And yeah, this is nearly done. Hopefully, hopefully this will all just work nicely. So um, we want some redstone along here, and you going into it. Oh, I've run out of everything. Right, I'll be right back once I've made some bits. All right, with an inventory full of crap. I return. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the last thing we needed to do was a comparator there. Oh, that's not going to work actually because that's one too short. Hmm, hold on a second. Uh, no, I think it's all good. I'm hearing things. Um, however, the pulse from that is not going to go far enough. Um, I can show you that by putting one in there. It only goes so far, so it's not powering the second one. Oh, oh, oh! Curse you, curse you, comparator! Why can't you give me more power? The, uh, oops. Let's put that back. Uh, like so. No, amazingly, the negative one does nothing as well. Uh, unless I pull a signal into the side. No. Okay, we'll we'll work around this. Um. I suppose I could just all offset it by one. That would also work. Yeah. So, what we'd have to do? Get rid of this. It's a little bit annoying, but you know, don't mind. So we'll have. If uh, pool. Hmm. If I put a repeater there. then it's just going to have to have a double sickness. See, it's already got not quite as nice as I wanted it to be. Um, what if it put it there instead? That's cool, actually. That might well work. So, hmm. Doesn't mean I have to tunnel out more, though. <laughs> Honestly. So yeah, this has been a massive distraction. This whole episode has been a bit of a, a weird one to put together between everything that's been going on. So those two there, that and that there. Uh, you on an offset? Yeah, okay, we can do that here. This is going to work. That's cool. Uh, we're going to need to dig a little bit further still because we need the signal coming around from the back of that. best laid plans and all that, you know. Um, so you are going to want to be up to there. And then we want two of you in there. One there, one there. <laughs> one last bit of wall. Wow. 
so much noise in the background. Not happy about that, but hey, and there we go. Poof. That should be it, I believe. Uh, so it's turned on. So the last signal, let's just. Is that going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14? Uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, hang on. That's not going to work. That's going to ruin everything straight away. Um, so we need to do that. Yeah, so that's going to go straight down. That shouldn't affect anything. Okay, I think. Ooh, I think this might work. Let's have a look. So once, let's turn it off effectively. Now we see if that actually starts working. Yeah, it is. It is, but it's definitely pulsing. It's not. Ah, ooh, yeah. Okay, yep, yeah, fair enough. So it's not getting up there. Um, hmm. Let's break that and that for the second. While we've got that pulse going on. It's desperately trying to do stuff. Oh, probably it's put all of the spuds in the dispenser. That kind of makes sense. Let's uh, quickly send a signal through that to stop it from doing anything for the time being. Because that ticking's kind of crazy. Uh, pop. There we go. Okay. Um, so what we need to do is get a signal into here as well. Now I don't know if that... That's not going to do it. It never... See, this still still gets, gets to me. This does. Still gets to me to this day. I can't work out this simple simple little bit of logic on here how to power both of these droppers at the same time it should be simple but without see all I can think of all I can think of is to do that and then have this going down um, and that should power both of them and then we need um, a signal no that's not that's, that's powering the wrong two I need that top one. I need the dispenser at the top being powered. See me. Uh, oh, okay. Hang on. Well, check this out. Oh yeah. There we go. Now it stops. That's freaking cool. Uh, yeah, I finished it. I managed to get it working. I tidied it all up, blocked it all off because I went on a bit of a rampage, uh, and made this. So I could show you guys. Tucked away back here is all the awesome new cool circuitry. Now uh, I'm pretty proud of this actually. It got quite compact for what it is. And I'll take you through from the beginning, <coughs> excuse me, all the way around. Um, so I moved the button over one because the button signal was interfering with uh, the dispenser. So the button signal comes from this cable here um, down and through and into the T flip flop system. Uh, that I didn't move. What I did move was the output and the um, looper and I shrunk it down a little bit as well. Um, so instead of filling up all of this space around here it's now taking up you know, a, f a fairly considerable amount less which is cool. Uh, so the looper system is the same. I reduced the number of repeaters down to two and added a longer delay on each so um, it still works in exactly the same way and the final pulse goes off um, to these two lines ultimately. I was pretty chuffed with this in the end. Uh, the main one goes up to the dispenser uh, which has eight spuds in it which is awesome and the bottom one goes up these blocks so this line goes through and powers this dropper. This charged block because of the redstone powers this hopper here uh, sorry dropper and um, same again here this block becomes charged because of the redstone and this repeater pulls it through to the bottom one uh, the only funky bit is the inclusion of this block here to separate these two lines so they don't touch. And that's it really, and it works. So what I'll do is I'll go and spill my spuds everywhere and quickly run back so we can see it all working. But there's the, uh, the ticking, it's looping back and forth quite nicely. Popping everything more or less, I'm going to run out of spuds. Hold on, I can't really show you the... Uh, the activation of the whole system unfortunately. That's a lot of a lot of potatoes. I've got to put some of them back in the hoppers. But yeah, it, it works really, really nicely. So this 
pushes forward, activates the loop, and the loop just goes up and triggers these two systems here, which is great. And I'm going to put most of these spuds back in the bottom one. So there we go. Project done, which is awesome. Thank you very much, Fish, for the idea. Uh, let's get one back. A couple. There we go. Just one or two. There we go. Four spuds. Nice. Um, any more? No. So the next thing that I wanted to get on with um, is the potion room a little bit. Now I've done not much. I added a bit of a framework here and I've had a bit of a think about where I'm going to put stuff. So I also shrunk this bit of the circuit down, this uh, pulse shortener, uh, put it into a sort of a 3x3 three three area, but it matters not that much because we're not working on this today. Um, this is still broken unfortunately. What I am going to do is knock up the framework for the nether warp farm, which is awesome, and include the etho smart piston technology in it as well. So I'm going to quickly push that through. Now let's have a look. We'll grab. Uh, we're going to need all four of those. Yeah, we've got some redstone torches, blah blah blah. Get the lot. I think that'll be everything I need. Repeaters definitely. 14 should be enough. Did I just? No. Right. So the idea is we need to place pistons here and here and they will be activated by the buttons awesome uh, where did the salt sand go? there it is we may as well put them back that's cool and then at the other end the smart piston design is awesome I still love this thing so that's the sort of intelligent bit as it were uh, oop, we need the uh, yep, round that way. I've got the piston round that way. Blimey! Um, and then we want a couple of these going both directions because we need a fairly long gap. I'm going to put it on three. Let's see if that's enough. And then we get the redstone and connect them up. And that should should be it. So we'll have a quick look. Pushes over and it comes back. There we go. Now we've probably got enough scope to speed that up a little bit. So let's put that on one and see how that does. This could break. Nope, that's it. That's pretty tight. Yep, more like that. That's fine. So we can build another one on the other side real quickly. Um, put you in. Oops, it's have to be positioned right. That's cool and the piston there and again just a couple of repeaters in a little pan so they take the signal out and this oops, pops the signal back in down torch there we go put you back and around like that so one two one two one two and was it one or did I take it off completely I took it off completely okay there we go. So that's the same thing. So what happens is that piston pushes this forward. This uh, piece of soul sand comes over here. Um, that in turn means that this repeater can pull the signal from the soul sand that sits here, which then sends the signal round on a slightly reduced delay, uh, allowing that piston to retract, at which point this one pushes everything back into place. So that should be both sides done. Awesome. There we go. I mean, yeah, a really simple build. It works really well. Did I bring any got any nether wall down here? Apparently not. That's genius. Well, oh, I've got to do it. it. Has to be done. But uh, yeah, I think for next time then we're going to fix the potion machine. Whew, that's that's going to be pretty epic. And we'll uh, we'll also get the mushroom um, machine, as it were. It's not really a machine. It's a water-based thing. Uh, set up here it's for mushroom collection and then that will be <clears throat> a couple of ingredients needed which would be really sweet so just at the end of this these are going to go everywhere because there's no backing on this yet I'm going to build all of this into a low ceiling have some nice lighting in here probably glowstone maybe some lamps uh, and then all of this will be netheracked off a little bit and possibly some glowstone hanging from the ceiling to make it look all nethery um, but yeah so if we pop these oh, and they come back there we go, we can pick them all up. Now there will be nothing, like I say, this will all be a wall with some lighting on it and then quartz on the floor. I thought it would be nice because it's going to be a very dark ceiling with a very white floor. And I think that's everything.
so yeah I hope you've uh, hope you've enjoyed the show guys um, yeah that's cool that's cool I wonder if I should make one switch for them but yeah thanks a lot um, yeah any questions or uh, comments or uh, ideas for other builds would be greatly appreciated um, but yeah I'm gonna call that for now so uh, I'll say thanks a lot I uh, hope you enjoyed it leave a leave a comment and a like um, and yeah I'll see you all next time cheers